Good day and welcome to Church of the King Online. My name is Sharma Reynal and I am one of your online campus pastors. And it is so great to be with you in this time online. And we want to thank you for joining us for the last week of our series. If you're happy and you know it, I'm not going to clap too loud because it's going to mess up the video sync. But we are so glad that you're joining us for this series. If you haven't watched the rest of the series, it is so, so good. So please be sure to go back and watch the rest. Then we want to invite you before we jump into the word to get connected. Our heart at Church of the King is to connect you with resources and relationships to help you further your walk with God. And our best way in doing this is our connect form. So we want to invite you fill it out. If this is your first time, if you're new, if you have been a part of the church online or in person, we want to see you connected because our hearts are that life and ministry and everything that we do is just better when we are together. And then we want to say thank you so much for your generosity. You know, because of your generosity, we've actually been able to make an impact far above and beyond what we could ever dream, think, or imagine. You know, in the lake area alone, we were able to sponsor at least $3,000 into scholarships into the local community. And that is because of your generosity. So thank you so much. If you want to give, you can do so with the info available on screen or in the description box down below. Now that's all from me. Please enjoy the last week of If You're Happy and You Know It. Welcome to the last week of If You're Happy and You Know It. My heart for you is that you can walk in the joy of the Lord, that you can know that your strength comes from Him, and in everything that you do, you prosper. I know that sounds like that 80s prosperity gospel, but let's read what the Bible says about it. It says in Psalms chapter 1, this is our hallmark passage of Scripture for this series, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. I, I, I want you to live a life where you're cutting out the areas of darkness in your life and those that are walking in darkness, you're walking in the light, not with them. And that you are delighting in God's word to you, that that's where your heart's desire are is. And that's what you're, you're meditating on. And it says they're like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. See, that's God's heart for you, that you prosper in all that you do. You know, somewhere along the way, like we, we've forgotten what we were created for. It's so easy to get to that place. You know, it's like at age, ages, I don't know if you remember, like age four to eight, that, that you're just growing up as a kid. It's like, I can do anything. You're wearing the superhero. Maybe I'm just speaking to dudes. I don't know, but you're wearing the superhero cape and like, I'm a super bad. I can lift and like, look, bad. and that's the age of like, look, ma, no hands. And you're riding your bike. You can do anything. But at age nine to 11, you know, I'm pretty good at some things. This is really cool. I can do a lot of things. And then the changes of life, ages 12 to 15, it's like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm good at this. Maybe I'm good at baseball. Or for me, it was like, okay, I'm pretty good at skateboarding. I skated into my twenties. You know, I was pretty good at skateboarding. I'm pretty good at dirt bikes. But just a, a few things, but everything else starts to be like, I'm not so good at that. Age 16 to 19, I'm like, uh, am I any good? I'm not so sure. And, and then come the, the 20s and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do with life? Like, what, what am I going to do with my life here at 20 years old? And then, you know, you get to 40 and you're asking the question like, wait, what am I doing with my life? And then as you get older, you get to age 60 and you're like, wait, what have I done with my life? See, I want you to know that in everything that you do, everything that you touch, because you were planted by the river of life, which is Christ, and that you were planted, grounded, and rooted in him, you know that you were, your leaves are not going to wither, that you were going to bear fruit in every season, and that everything you do, you're going to prosper. That, that's, not, that's not arrogance. It's actually humility because you recognize that God is good. And though you may walk through difficult things, you know that the blessing 
from the Lord is on your life. Are you going to walk through seasons of darkness and death? Of course we all do because we live in a broken, sinful world. But Jesus broke the curse of sin so that we don't have to walk underneath the curse. We can walk under the blessing that God had for, for Adam and Eve from the very beginning. Genesis 1, 27 and 28. God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. He wanted us to reflect him. Then in in verse 28, it says, Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. You need to know, If you want to prosper in everything, first of all, that's not about finances. That's about life and everything that you touch comes to life. It's like having a spiritual green thumb. Like you have to know if you want that, I want to prosper in everything. This isn't about you gaining more finances. And and if that's your mindset, I'm asking you like, why? Like, Why is that your mindset? I want to get more stuff. Stuff isn't eternal. It's all going to burn up relationship is eternal. What's your relationship like with God? What's your relationship like with people? But I want you to prosper in everything that you do. The key to that is knowing. God's blessed us in three ways. It says it right there in Genesis 1 28, to be fruitful and to multiply. God wants everything inside of you to trust all of him. And then when you surrender all of you to all of him, The fruit that grows in your life is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. Those are the fruit of God's Spirit. And what happens when you are sowing good seed? We talked about this last week, that things come to life around you. God blessed Adam and Eve. He blessed them. Look at what it says. God blessed them, said, be fruitful. This was his blessing, be fruitful and multiply. The fact of the matter is that you reproduce what you are. So if we look around and go, wow, why am I living in a, in a place of death? My question is, where am I receiving life from Christ? Be fruitful. See, we all have fruit in our life. The question is, what kind of fruit? If you want cynicism, all you have to do is Look at the world through a jaded lens rather than through the faith of the future that God has for you and the people around you. Because when you fail to look with the eyes that God looks at this world with, you'll always end up jaded and cynical. I don't like cynicism so much. It's easy though, isn't it? That God didn't create us to have that kind of fruit. He called us to have fruit and multiply according to his word and his ways that always bring life. Then it says, fill the earth. God, to fill the earth. That's the second blessing. God blessed us. He blessed you to be fruitful and to multiply. He blessed you to fill the earth. What does, what does that mean? Like, what is that? Like, fill it with what? With his presence through you. And then the third blessing, to reign. That means that you've given an area where you have authority Listen, I don't have control over you. I can't control what you're going to do, what you're going to say. I just can't do that. That doesn't, and if I would, that would be so weird if I attempted that. That would be manipulative, narcissistic. It'd be psycho, right? But you know what? I do have the ability to reign over the environment just right around me. God's blessed me with an amazing wife and children and I get to set the tone for what our home is like. I haven't always done a perfect job at that. But I know that God's blessed our home and our family. He's blessed me to be fruitful and multiply, to fill the earth, to enlarge the influence that that I have because of some good seed in his kingdom. And really, it says in some translations, to take dominion. In other words, to recognize. Oh, wow, Lord. Wow, you've given me this arena. And your heart is 
to see me blessed so that I reflect you. And everybody looks at me, but they see your goodness and your grace. That's how he's blessed us. So what are the areas? What is, you know, that fruitful multiply, fill the earth, rain? Like, how do we do that? What are the practical things? So here it are. Here they are. Here are those practical things. I want you to be, and I pray that you are fruitful in three things, fruitful in your faith, fruitful in your family, and fruitful in your finances. And we're going to look at keys that help unlock that. So here we go. If you're going to be fruitful in faith, you have to sow seeds. No surprise, fruit comes from a seed that's being sown. Look, this is what I have right here. I have this this little packet uh, of spinach. I, I got this from Jared and Melody, whose house is right over over there. I'm, I'm, I'm right by them recording. And I said, hey, I need seeds. Do you guys have them? I knew they would. And they, they handed me spinach. I think that's really fitting because, you know, it's like Popeye the sailor, man. You know, because it's supposed to give you strength. But the seeds that you sow are huge. If you want to, if you want to grow in faith, I want to grow in faith. I want to be fruitful in faith. You have to sow seeds of obedience. I don't care how much, how, how, how big of a Christian you are, how much scripture you know. I'm the best Christian around. I've got my big thick Bible on. I'm going to put it up under my arm and go to church. Good for you. That's, that's great. I, I don't care if you can quote the Bible to me. So can the enemy. Demons can quote scripture. What makes the difference? What are you obeying? What are you living by? What are you living by? You want to be fruitful in faith, sow seeds of obedience. Sow seeds of obedience. First John chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. So let's just dispel the myth that, oh, if I'm going to live as a Christian, I'm going to live by this book, and look how thick it is, and I've got to do all of these things, and it's going to be miserable. I hate it. No, it's not. It's life and peace. When you trust God, is it always easy? No. Do you have to deny your flesh what it wants? Yes, but guess what? My flesh wants Bluebell every night. I love Bluebell. I could eat an entire tub every day, but that would be detrimental to my health. This is a picture of sin. So when we sow seeds of obedience, yes, we are going to have to deny our flesh what it wants. But the end result is health, wholeness, peace, longevity, life. That's why I don't eat bluebell every night. I, I, I might have for a little while, but just a bowl. But then I realized I didn't like the way that I was feeling or what I was becoming. So I cut it out. Fruitful in faith. Sow seeds of obedience. Loving God means keeping his commandments. His commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God, defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith because we believe what God has for us is better than the sinful bowl of bluebell. This is metaphorically speaking, and for some of us, maybe practically speaking. Every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? It's a, it's a great question. Who, who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It is Jesus. Every good thing in me is from the Lord. You know, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights above. Wow. I've got to know that. I want you to be fruitful in faith. That means you have to do what you don't want to do so that you can become what you're called to be. So you're going to have to sow seeds of obedience. But guess what? Those little bitty seeds of obedience. I think I'm going to open this up. Let's see if I can do this while on camera. Sorry, Mel. I hope I don't spill your coming salad. Okay, I'm just going to flip it. No, I'm done. Now she's going to be mad. Oh, well. Oh, look at this. Doesn't look like much. You're telling me that, that this can produce an entire salad? Look how small it is. Yeah, yeah. If you put it in the ground, if you water it, if you tend it, if you keep it, it's going to grow into something that is life-sustaining and like Popeye, you can have strength from it. Be fruitful in your faith. So seeds of obedience. Here's the second thing. Fruitful in your family. And what does that look like? That's sowing seeds into the next generation. Sow seeds into the next generation. 
Psalms 127, 4 and 5. Now, I know you're probably thinking this is biological when I read it, you might, but it's more than that because you don't have to be a biological parent to be a spiritual mom or dad. Children are a gift from the Lord. They're a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. Wow. You can defeat the enemy. Children in a warrior's hands are like, to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. Wow, it defeats the enemy. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He'll not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. Are you sowing seeds into the next generation? You know, the cool thing with this picture is, wow, like children are, are like, they're like arrows in a warrior's hand. An arrow gets shot much further than, than I can go in my lifetime. It's like you come to the end of your life and then our children, both biologically and spiritually, are going to go farther and do more to destroy the work of the enemy and bring the kingdom of God than we are. But I have to be willing to sow seeds into the future generations. This is an old statistic, but but I read that it, it's something like 180. This is probably from when I first had my children. It was like $180,000 per child you will spend. And you're like, oh my gosh, I've got four kids. I'm like, I ain't no millionaire. Like, what the heck? Where is this coming from? Best investment ever. To look at my children as, as they're growing up. They're still have a 12 year old and have a 20 year old, 17 and a 14. And just so exciting to see what's beginning to grow because God's at work and you don't know what the end result's going to look like, but I want to invest in that. Faithful in your family, sow seeds into the next generation. One of the focuses that we have for 2023 is we want to invest in the next generation, but not just for 2023. As a church, we invest in the next generation. We want to reach young people with the truth that God knows them and loves them and has a purpose and plan for their life. So we're willing to sacrifice for that. Why? Because the payoff is that arrow that, that gets shot into the next generation prosper in everything that you do. Let me just remind you of this truth. There is no success without a successor. And this is not about a biological heir. It's about the spiritual truth that you will reproduce what you are. Be fruitful, multiply. Remember, God, God blessed them to multiply. That's reproduce after their kind, like you, that's a spiritual law. You will reproduce after your kind. So if you want to prosper in everything that you do, listen, you're going to sow seeds of obedience because you know it's going to bring life in everything that you touch. You're going to sow seeds into the next generation because you recognize that what God is going to use you to do, you may never see because he has something through you into someone who is that will be. Fruitful and your faith, so seeds of obedience. Fruitful in your family, spiritual family as well, so seeds into future generations and that next generation. Fruitful in your finances, so seeds of generosity. So seeds of generosity. As obedience opens the door to life from God. So many people find themselves in a place of financial death because they violated biblical principles wisdom, storing what you have, taking care of what you have, not recognizing the power of generosity and obedience. Deuteronomy 15, four through eight says, there should be no poor among you for the Lord your God will greatly bless you in the land he's giving you as a special possession. By the way, you have to know that you're blessed. You won't be blessed unless you receive the truth that you are blessed because of God, not your own skill, wisdom, strength, fortitude, and stick to itness. You'll receive this blessing if you are careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today. The Lord your God will bless you as he promised. You will lend money to many nations, but you'll never need to borrow. You will rule many nations, but they will not rule over you. And then I want to read verse 10. It says, give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, for the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. See, verse 4 says, there should be no poor among you. 
And verse 10 says, give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, and that God's going to bless you in everything you do. Then verse 11 says this, they're always going to be some poor with you. The question is, what do you want to be? The one who is blessed by God knows it, that you operate in faith, that you sow seeds of generosity, obedience into the next and into the next generation so that you can be one of the blessed that is able to give generously to the poor rather than be one who is. And I'm not talking just about finances because poverty, this is the greatest symptom of poverty is a lack of finances or a lack of resources. But the root is a belief that I am not. It's a mindset. It's a curse. I know I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed. And I need to walk in the place of obedience. Can I just say, I need to walk in the place of faith. I need to sow seeds of faith through obedience. I need to sow seeds into the next generation. You want a healthy family? Start sowing seeds in, into, into your children, to other kids that you take on as kids. I've got a whole lot more than just four kids. I've got four other kids that actually I'm their fake uncle slash they're like, I call them my second daughters. I mean, that's just because that's how it is. Like I want to sow into people. In fact, it's not just living generously. It's living in obedience. So many Christians miss it. They think that they think that pastors are after their money. I'm just telling you, I'm not. If, if you love the Lord, you just trust him. I grew up in a home that nobody was in ministry, but I watched my dad faithfully, generously give. At one point in his life, I remember so clearly he told me, son, the reason that we're blessed is because we live on a third, we invest a third, and we give away a third. That's how generous he, he was. Yeah, well, yeah, he's, must have, he's a physician, so he did well. And you're like, well, yeah, he could do that, but he didn't have to, now did he? What are you trusting God with? Malachi. 3 8. Should people cheat God? Yet you've cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? Where did we ever cheat you? You've cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You're under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there'll be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I'll open the window of heaven for you. I'll pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try me, put it to the test. Wow, how is it cheating? Does God need our money? No, he doesn't. See, this is the principle that I want you to get. In their tithing, it was the very first. Remember, it's an agrarian society. It was the first of their crops. It was the first of their livestock. And in giving that to the Lord, they didn't know if they were going to get anything else. They gave their first and they gave their best. This is what God is saying to you and to me. Give your first, give your best, put me to the test. I'm just telling you right now, for years, years and years, two things at the same time. Number one, we lived by Dave Ramsey's cash system because we didn't have any money. My wife was in school for a lot of years. I was in school, I was in ministry, and then and then she stopped having to, when she had our first son. And, and so we lived by cash system with Dave Ramsey. And our budget didn't make sense. It was depressing because our expenses were more than our income. And over and over, as we went, I'm Lord, I'm giving you my first. I trust you with my finances. We were sowing seeds of obedience and tithing. We were sowing seeds of generosity and giving. Here's what we gave. This is what we gave away. And I, I don't know that I've ever shared this online. I shared this in person. We gave away um, homes. That's a long story. We gave away cars. We're going to give away another one. Super excited about that. Uh, we gave, I gave away guitars, lots of them, good ones. And, we, and my wife gave away clothes. I can't even begin to tell you what a joy that has been to be able to do that and to see the fruit of that and God just pouring out blessings. I want you to prosper in everything you put your hand to. Obedience to his word brings life for you. Sow seeds of obedience. Faith for family means you're going to pour into other people's kids. You're going to pour into your kids. It's sowing seeds into the next generation. Faith for finances. Sow seeds of generosity and obedience. Watch what happens. It's the only place where it says, God says, put me to the test. In fact, there's one other place where it says, listen, don't 
put the Lord your God to, te- to the test, but this is his exception. Trust him. Trust him with your family. Trust him with your heart. Trust him with your finances. Watch the miracles take place. It's called the miracle of life in a place of death. Everybody talks about when they have kids, like, such a miracle, and it is. It's not the only area we get to see something from nothing. The relationships that we have, heart of hope that doesn't make sense in darkness, and provision when it doesn't make any sense. You know why? Because God's good. And when you're planted by the river of life, that's what you get, life. Maybe you've been walking in darkness. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. Surrender. Stop holding on to your way, your things, your stuff. Your, just surrender. Say, Jesus, I give it to you. That's you. I'm going to pray with you. Just pray with me. Say, dear Jesus, I give you all of me. I give you my heart. I give you my future. I give you my finances. I give all everything to you. It's all yours. Jesus, you, you paid the price to break the curse of sin in my life on that cross. I receive your forgiveness and I surrender to you in Jesus' name. Listen, if that's you, let us know because that's the very first step of the walk that God has for you. The next step is always towards him and other people that can help encourage you. Let us connect you with relationships, resources to help you grow. Love you guys. See y'all soon. God bless.